Buongiorno e benvenuti. My name is Giovanna and I welcome you to my kitchen on the cliff. Hello to all. I've missed you for the past few weeks because I was recuperating from a hip replacement. I am doing fine and I thank all of you for your uh, notes and greetings and words of encouragement. I'm now ready for action with my brand new hip. What we're going to do today <clears throat> is to make Italian frittate. Now frittate are, uh, of course, omelets made with eggs and anything that you have around and literally anything that you have around. So we're going to start by making one that when we were kids were very often our school lunch. And that would be a sandwich made with a very, very simple frittata, which I will show you. And then we'll do some others that uh, you can take on a picnic or that you can have as a wonderful brunch anytime. Now, three of the uh, frittate are going to be made with eggs. Uh, the last one is going to be made with chickpea flour. Uh, this is a street food that is absolutely wonderful. In Italian it's called farinata and in French it's called socca. And uh, there are boys on bicycles with a great big pan in front of the bicycle and they will take a piece, put it on a piece of wax paper and give it to you right on the street. And it's the best thing you've ever had. So I wanted to share that particular uh, recipe with all of you. So we will start with a very simple frittata that my father would make for us very often to bring to school for lunch. Two eggs, to the eggs we're going to add half a teaspoon of salt, Italian flat leaf parsley, Italian flat leaf parsley is probably the uh, most often used herb in, in Italian cooking. We always have it in the house, we use it liberally. Okay, together with the parsley, we're going to add a clove of garlic. That's it. You'll be very surprised at how much flavor and deliciousness you get out of two eggs, some parsley and some garlic. So here we go. I'm going to beat them. Now we move to the stove to make the first frittata. Turning the heat on low, heating the pan, and I'm going to add olive oil. Rolling the pan to get the olive oil to coat the pan all over. When you smell the oil, it's hot enough to pour the eggs in. I'm lifting the sides of the uh, frittata just to get the egg onto the bottom of the pan. You could just push the, the edges towards the middle and let the egg that's still flowing go to the bottom of the pan. Okay, shake the pan to be sure that nothing is sticking. The first frittata is done. I'm going to make the sandwich immediately to take advantage of the fact that since it's hot, it's going to heat up the uh, bread as well. So I'm cutting the bread in half. Okay, I'm going to wrap it immediately. So this is ready for a school lunch. It's ready for your own lunch, uh, whenever you get around to it. And I would say at this point, everything is hot, don't refrigerate it. I know that people are terrified of uh, spoilage, but uh, this is fully cooked. So this is our first frittata. Now, if you happen to be vegan, we have a version of a frittata that you will love. Although it has no eggs, it, has, it doesn't lose any of the properties of a delicious frittata. For this, we're going to need one cup of water, an equal amount of chickpea flour. So that is one cup of chickpea flour and one cup of water. So to make this vegan frittata a little more convincing, we're going to use black salt. And 
uh, that will give a little bit of the eggy flavor. Okay, there's the black salt. This is a time to take out your immersion blender if you have one and get as smooth a batter as you can. I'm using a whisk because it's a small amount and this will do fine. Now you let this sit for one hour or if you want to even overnight. So while the batter is resting, we're going to prepare the spinach. The spinach is triple washed and the water from the last rinse is still on the leaves. I'm going to use that to uh, saute the spinach. We're going to take a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. It seems like a lot, but it's <laughs> it goes out very slowly. Okay, I'm going to chop some garlic right into the pot where the oil is uh, heating. Once the garlic turns golden, we add the spinach with the water that clings to it from the last rinse. We add some salt. This is about 12 ounces of spinach. And remember that spinach cooks down to practically nothing. So you always want to have more than you think you're going to use. Do you remember that big bowl of spinach? Well, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> the chickpea batter has been sitting for one hour. We're now going to mix the batter. See how beautifully it flows? Now we're going to add the spinach. This is now ready to be made into a frittata. So for the chickpea, we're going to use a cast iron pan, which of course can go into the oven. So we're going to start it on the stove top. So we're going to allow this to become a nice crusty bottom. And then we'll put it in the oven and we'll cook it for 15 more minutes. You hear it? That means that it's sizzling and it's starting to make a beautiful bottom. I put the chickpea frittata in the oven where it will cook for 15 minutes. The temperature is 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The next frittata that we're going to make is the quintessentially Sicilian one and it's made with peas. Uh, Sicily produced the first peas in the spring, always. And those were not meant for, local, for the local markets. Those, um, I'm talking about 1700s, the 1800s, when, uh, when royal houses abounded in Europe. So those were headed for the royals. They were headed for the aristocracy. Uh, but Sicily was known for the specialty of having the very first crop of, uh, of peas. These are frozen peas, and the reason why I prefer the frozen peas to the fresh peas, even if the fresh peas are available, you are never going to get this quality. These are called tender, tiny peas. And the first time I sent my husband out to buy frozen peas called tiny, tender peas, he thought I was joking. And I don't, I don't remember what he came home with, but it actually says on the package, tender, tiny peas. They're all the same size and they are baby peas. They are not uh, the full-grown peas that tend to be uh, very starchy and the kind that we all grew up with and never liked. So the next uh, frittata is going to be the Sicilian frittata of frittata di piselli. And these are the piselli. Uh, some of you will find it shocking that I use a quarter of a cup of olive oil to start a dish. But remember that this has nothing else in it. The, the only flavor, flavorful ingredient is the oil. So you do add a quarter of a cup of oil and two cloves of garlic, which are uh, browned. When you're sauteing garlic, please don't write any text. Just pay attention to the garlic. If the garlic begins to get brown very quickly, what you do is you add the next ingredient immediately. So here we go. These are our tiny tender peas. This needs salt and pepper. I'm going to cover and cook for two minutes. All you need is about five ounces. You know, most packages are 10 ounces. This package happened to be one or 16 ounces, but five ounces of peas would be all that you would need to make a frittata with four eggs. 
Okay, we're going to add a little salt to the eggs. Not too much because the peas have salt as well. Let's beat the eggs. I'm going to add one and a half cups of peas. This is a wonderful tool in the kitchen. This is a frittata pan from Italy. Now, this one is 50 years old, and it's lasted all that time because I have never allowed any member of the family to touch it. I am the only one who uses it, washes it, and puts it away. So, it's two frying pans that are hinged to each other and separate. So, here's how it works. We take the bottom of the pan, we turn the heat on, medium heat, we add oil, I'm just spreading the oil on the bottom of the pan, I want the whole bottom of the pan to be covered, okay, there it goes. You hear that? That's your signal that the oil is hot enough. What I'm doing is lifting the bottom of the frittata with a fork, you see, so that the uh, uncooked egg goes to the bottom of the pan. I'm going to heat the second pan. All right, this is hot. I'm going to turn it over, engage the hinges, and then holding it with both hands, and just turn it. And look at that. When I taught at ICE, the, the Institute of Culinary Education in Manhattan, uh, the first thing I bought was one of these pans, and I was very surprised that I found it on Amazon and that it was less expensive than it would have been in Italy. So um, I bought one and we used it in the class and I think uh, many of the people who took the class would buy one. So it makes a magnificent looking frittata. This is just perfect. The last frittata we're going to make is probably the most beloved of all Italian Americans because Every one of them grew up with this delicious frittata made with fried onions and fried potatoes and, of course, eggs. Uh, it's just there's something about the combination of flavors, and I think the, the, the uh, nostalgia of having had it as a child. Uh, that, too, very often got made into a sandwich and sent to school with the kids. Now, um, I have potatoes here that, uh, to fry for the frittata, but it happens that we had some leftover French fries from lunch. I have never left the restaurant and left the French fries there. I always take them home. And I explain it to the waitress because they don't always understand how somebody could possibly take French fries back in a, in a doggy bag. But I make the frittata with, uh, with commercially made French fries and lots of onions, two large onions, and a portion of uh, French fries makes an absolutely delicious frittata. So here we go. We're going to fry the onions and we're not going to bother with the potatoes because we already have them fried. The magic number, a quarter of a cup of olive oil. We heat it up. And I slice the onions right into the pan. Of course, there's nothing like frying onions. If you want to welcome people into a home, you either bake bread and they come into the scent of baked bread and they're in heaven, or you fry onions and uh, everybody will think that they're going to eat very well that night. And they probably are. We're adding one teaspoon of salt and a little pepper. Now we're adding the caramelized onions. 
Next, we'll add the potatoes. I'm just going to break up the bigger ones. This, by the way, is the best use for commercial French fries. I can't think of anything better to do with them. Okay. So I'm adding some oil to the frying pan. I'm letting it warm up. Same as in the last frittata, medium heat, let the oil sizzle. See, that's a perfect sound. Now, in case you don't have one of these uh, wonderful pans that I so recommend, you can finish all of these in the oven. Just be sure that you have a pan that can go into the oven that has no plastic uh, components. So when, instead of turning it onto a plate, if you find that difficult, then just put it in the oven for 10 minutes and the, the top will uh, cook. You see, notice, you see how this is moving? Nothing is stuck. All right, I just put the top part on. I hinged the two frying pans. Now, be sure that you're using both hands, right? And you are going to do a quick turn. And then you shake it, and it all goes in. We have made a buffet of frittate, and I hope you will try them. Either make one for lunch or make all of them and have a party. We made the Sicilian one with peas. This is a very typical Sicilian dish, frittata with peas. We made the vegan one, which is a chickpea flour and uh, a spinach in this case. And we made the all-time favorite of Italian-Americans, which is onion and fried potatoes made into a frittata. This one is the portable one, the most portable one, because it's really all portable. And it is a simple frittata made with just two eggs, some sprigs of parsley, and some garlic. I promise that they are all delicious and that if you make them, you will make them again and again. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Ciao, alla prossima volta. Mwah.